I think it's an important class. And, but I want to start with that question. I want to ask you why you think this, this is, as you all know, this is a state requirement to receive this training once a year for DV perpetrator counselors. Why do you think that is? I'm just curious your thoughts about why you think we have this requirement. Because we work with the group that can be quite racist, very sexist, and very homophobic. Yeah, I mean that in a nutshell really is the answer, isn't it? Is there any other thoughts other than that as to why we teach this class? And we work with a group that is often victims of. Yes, exactly. Okay. Interesting, right? Okay. Any other thoughts about why we might teach this class? Well, I just think that, uh, you know, at the root, you know, domestic violence is about somebody, you know, not recognizing the whole humanity of their partner, mm. uh, which is also, in essence, uh, you know, what happens in racism, you know, not seeing somebody beyond their uh, racial or ethnic background or sexism, you know, having stereotype beliefs based on gender and homophobia, you know, same thing. Exactly. Yeah, I, I agree with all that. I, I, I think, it, go ahead, sorry, I missed somebody. It could also make us more sensitive as human beings. And, you know, we're not just working with clients, it's us and as part of that too. Mm -hmm. Thank you for that. I, clearly, I think part of what we're going to be talking about today is that whole idea of our own internalized beliefs and how they play out in our lives as counselors and how they play out in this arena. Um, so I, I appreciate it. Did you have your hand up? Similar, yes. Yeah, the, the need and the value of looking at ourselves first in order to teach something. Mm -hmm. We need to first take our own inventory about that. So I, agree. so I started with this idea that a lot of these come down to fear. Fear of others, fear of something different, whatever it might be. And the reason I think that's important is when I look at um, <laughs> the issues we treat in our classes, you know, domestic violence, I believe all violent and abusive behavior, my definition of abusive behavior is any behavior that has the possibility of doing physical or psychological harm to someone else. So any of this behavior, in my opinion, is about control. Because my definition of control is attempt to put power over somebody else and take away their choice. And I believe that all control is about fear. That a fear is generated, which generates a need to control the situation, your environment, others, whatever it is that's occurring. Okay, so that brings us back to here, right? So if you buy this premise, that fear generates the need to be con to control, and control generates abusive behavior, I believe all abusive behavior is a form of control, then, this issue becomes paramount in the work that we do and what we teach and what we're talking about. And it's definitely related to these concepts. So I want to make some comments about some of this, about how to move the conversation to our groups and maybe to people in our lives, how to talk about these topics. And we're not just talking about racism, of course. We're talking about racism, sexism, homophobia, or any type of oppression. And there's all kinds of oppression, you know, that we're not listing every one of them, but there's lots. Um, I believe we cannot shove the charge of racism in someone's face. Shouting, that's racist, that's racist, is not going to bring about the change that needs to occur. You cannot shame or embarrass someone into change or growth. You have to invite them. Inviting them means finding a way to start a conversation with respect about why you think something is problematic all the while sharing about your own transformation of thought, belief, and heart around racial issues. If you have not had a transformation, you cannot really help others with this. If you believe you never needed one, you might not be seeing things clearly, and your own defensiveness and the ego might be getting in the way. I say this because I believe racism is everywhere. Racism, sexism, and homophobia and other forms of oppression are built into our culture. It is in our schools, textbooks, movies, music, 
novels, government, internet, families, neighborhoods, advertisements, commercials, laws, IQ tests, radio programs, TV programs, mental health evaluations, child protective service evaluations, service orders, court orders, judges orders, probation orders, social service programs, and in our own conscious and subconscious minds. You simply cannot escape it. Your conscious thought may indeed be all about equality, and that is a great thing. But racism may be integrated into advantages and disadvantages you are just not seeing and you may be contributing to, benefiting from or harmed by these power imbalances and racist structures. Learning to see racism, sexism, and homophobia requires an open, non-defensive position, and that requires an effort on our part to continually be resetting our reactive thought to understanding thought. To go from fear to faith. From blaming to self-accountability. If you do your best to embody these ideas, you will be more effective at teaching them. So what I think is important to note um, is that when we think of racism, we often think of really big events, big horrifying events. Um, but you know, since the civil rights movement, I feel like racism and oppression has become driven more underground and it's turned into things like microaggressions, which are smaller instances of you know, oppressive things at individuals. It's, it's harder to tell, it's more vague, it's more ambiguous. So it's really important to um, kind of become aware of these and aware of the impact that they have. We're speaking on racism and I can say that I've lived that. Um, I can say that I live it at least once a week. Uh, whether it be you go to a grocery store, you go to a school or something, you know, you, uh, for me it is, hola, or hey senorita, you know, and it's, it's kind of like Miss Ash is going to talk to you guys later about microaggressions. It's something that people, sometimes they don't realize they're doing, they mean no harm of it, uh, but someone like on the other side of the coin, me, I, I get so used to it that I feel like it's something that I'm going to get approached as, you know, I'm going to get approached talk by someone talking to me in Spanish. I mean, to get approached and asked, where are you from? Where, you know, what, what language do you speak? And, and although their intentions may not be, you know, bad, <clears throat> someone that lives that every day, sometimes it's hard to, to differentiate. You know, are they being honest? Do they really want to know where I'm from? Or are they just questioning because they're, they're in fear?